Hello everyone, today I'm going to be bringing to you guys uh, the solution to FRQ number 7 in the 2017 AP Chemistry Free Response section uh, of this exam. So uh, one thing to note is that uh, College Board has not released the official guidelines, scoring guidelines for this question or for any of the free response questions in general for this exam. So um, everything you see here is uh, may not be the exact answer but it should give you a good idea of what you can expect the correct answer to be like. So let's get started. So this question is going to deal with um, two reactions, uh, both uh, dealing with titrations. So the first one we're gonna have dichromate as a titrant and then the second one we're gonna have cobalt um, with a charge of two plus as a titrant. Um, and then it's also gonna show us the half reactions that uh, make up those two reactions and their E naught values at 298 Kelvin. So, uh, parts 1 and 2 in part A of this question ask you to determine the E naught for the reactions. So, um, the first part asks for the E naught for the reaction between dichromate and H2O2, and the second one asks for uh, CO2 plus and H2O2. So, I have outlined a procedure on what we can do to solve this question. So, the first step we can do is to determine which half reactions are part of which overall reaction. So remember, they gave us four half reactions, so which means that two of those half reactions have to make up the dichromate overall reaction. Um, then we're going to rearrange the two half reactions to get the overall reaction. So what we're going to do is uh, flip a reaction if we need to. We're going to multiply a reaction by um, entire reaction by some coefficient if we have to get the electrons to cancel when we add up the two half reactions. And then in the third step, we're going to adjust the E naught values for the half reactions. So if we had to flip one of the reactions from, uh, let's say, reduction to oxidation, um, in order to get the overall reaction, we're going to uh, reverse the sign on the E naught. So for example, if it was plus five, um, it's going to become minus five. Step four, we're going to add the E naught values for the half reactions to get the overall E naught value of the cell. Remember, that's how you do that. Okay, so here's the solution for part A uh, part I of part A, I should say, with dichromate as a titrate. So first we're going to select uh, half reactions 3 and 4 because if you notice, um, those half reactions will give us all the compounds or elements that make up the overall reaction for dichromate. So here we have the first uh, half reaction, half reaction number 3. Here we have the second half reaction, uh, half reaction number 4. And what we're going to have to do to the second one is multiply the whole entire reaction by 3 that entire half reaction by three um, in order to get the electron state equal. See, we have six over here and we only have two over here. Now we're also going to have to flip it because if you notice in our um, dichromate reaction, we have H2O2 on the left side and here we have it on the right side. So we're gonna wanna flip this. So uh, what is that gonna do when we multiply everything out and flip the second half reaction? Well, we're gonna add them and simplify so we're going to get uh, this lengthy equation. So basically what we can do from here is notice uh, things that we can cancel on both sides, which I've highlighted in red. So we have six electrons on both sides, which we should have after uh, multiplying and uh, reversing it. Uh, so these are going to cancel and go away. Um, we have 14 H plus on this side and 6 H plus on this side, which means we can get rid of this one and therefore only be left with 8 on this side. So that's how we get the overall reaction. Okay, so now uh, think back to what this question was actually asking. So this question was asking for the E naught value of the overall reaction. So how do we do that? Well, if you remember, we're going to adjust the values, the E naught values for the half reactions if we have to, which we are going to for this one right here, the half reaction number four, because we flipped it, we're gonna make it negative what, of what it originally was, and then we're going to add those E naught values. So in this table, we have uh, half reaction number three, uh, we have a E naught value of 1.33, and we keep it the same because we do not flip the reaction over. And then the second one, we're going to flip it, um, so it's going to become negative 0.7, and then we're going to add them to get an overall value of 0 0.63 positive. So for part uh, two of part A, it's basically the same procedure with the other two half reactions. So again, we're going to uh, multiply and reverse the first one because we see that um, cobalt uh, three plus should be on the other side. 
So, and then we're going to add the half reaction, simplify once again. So this time only the electrons are common, so uh, we eliminate those to get the overall reaction. And then we're going to uh, flip the sign on the enot value of the first one um, in order to uh, represent what change we made. And then we're going to add them to get an overall enot value of negative 0.07. Okay, so that's all you have to do for part A. So for part B, it actually gets quite simple if you understand part A. Part B asks um, which titrant should the student choose in order to make uh, the titration reaction thermodynamically favorable. Well, if you think back to your equation sheet, you should notice one equation that sticks out to you. Uh, this one, delta G equals N negative NFE, where N is the uh, moles of electrons transferred in the reaction, F is Faraday's constant, and E is the value we've calculated. So this table kind of shows you that if E is um, positive, then delta G is going to be negative, which means it's going to be spontaneous or thermodynamically favored. So we're searching for the titrant uh, <clears throat> reaction, which gives you a, a negative value for delta G. So, so the students should choose the dichromate as titrant because it has a positive E0 value, which makes the titration reaction spontaneous, or in other words, thermodynamically favorable. Okay, so that's it for the first part for part B. The second part asks you to calculate the value of delta G in kilojoules per mole of reaction for the reaction between the chosen titrant and H2O2 aqueous. So we're going to again use this equation, and this part should honestly be a breeze if you got the first part in part B, because um, all, all we're going to do is plug in the values that we found earlier. So the only tricky one here is N because N is what you have to determine from the half reaction when you add them. So uh, we found, if you remember, uh, for this reaction that N is equal to 6 because we had 6 moles of electrons on both sides before we canceled. And then F, you know, is uh, 96,500. E naught was positive 0.63. So we're going to get a delta G value of negative 3.6 kilojoules per, per mole of reaction. Now when you get this answer originally, you're going to get it in joules. So what you're going to have to do is divide by a thousand um, and, and round to the correct number of six figs, which is in this case two, to get the uh, correct answer. So that's it for this video and I hope it helped.